So uh, let's get started. My name is Meng Yi. I am a solution engineer at WhatsApp. Um, you can find me tweeting a lot of uh, cat GIFs and uh, articles that I like at my Twitter handle Meng Yi underscore uh, Yuan. So today's topic is going to be about uh, scaling product support with Python. Um, basically, I will cover what product support means, um, the challenges of product support, the importance of product support, and uh, how, do, how we scaled up the product support uh, with Python at WhatsApp. Before you can um, worry about scaling product support, you first need a product to support. So imagine that your product just uh, goes live, congratulations, but now you need to support it for the rest of your life. <laughs> um, imagine this is a normal day on call, and uh, according to Murphy's Law, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So uh, 10 minutes into your on-call rotation, you will start to see uh, the number of alerts that you are seeing, uh, warnings you are seeing, uh, are increasing and you even receive user bug reports. So what do you do on a normal day on call? Uh, to, to get started with, you probably will check your monitoring dashboards and alerts and see if there is any specific request that is filling more often than before. Uh, if your CPU is being overloaded, if your memory is being, uh, is being used up, then you try to reproduce the error um, and you need to check the logs and stack trees. And uh, as a last result, if you really cannot go anywhere, you have to um, and do this with uh, caution. And I definitely don't recommend this, is to get access to the servers where you deploy your application and uh, try to figure out some, uh, if there's anything wrong with that. Uh, and if you still cannot find anything, just restart everything and uh, things will be fine. <laughs> So now um, you start to have an idea of what is actually wrong. Um, it can be on the application level, so it could uh, be a regression error. Uh, something that works before doesn't work anymore. Um, it can be edge case where the user is, uh, is using your application in ways that you never expected. Uh, they may be running on a very old version where uh, you do not support anymore, but uh, you have a newer version that fixed the bug that they reported. Uh, on the environment level, they may have a uh, different uh, OS than all the OS you have tested on. They may be running a different browser um, that you have done all the exhaustive testing but still missed that. Um, it can also be configurations. This is more applicable for server-side applications. So let's say if they deploy uh, your software in their uh, data centers and uh, they have a they have a firewall that blocks everything, then nothing will work, of course. So um, being on call is not the easiest thing in the world, but I would want to stress that the quality of product support is actually very crucial to the success of the product. Um, actually, now nowadays in the market, a lot of the products are the same. So if you think you have a brilliant idea and uh, you, your product is unique, there is probably already five uh, applications copying your idea. So um, okay. Um, then what differentiates you from your competitors is, of course, the quality of your product, but the product support is also crucial. Uh, so let's say, um, for happy customers, they will definitely bring more customers, especially true for a new product. Um, the customers who are using your product is probably like early adopters of your product. They will be the best advocate for your, for your product if, you, if uh, whatever they are giving feedback on, you act upon them, and they will have the sense of that you are building and improving this product at the, um, together. On the other hand, uh, if the customer is unhappy with how you support your products, maybe they are very enthusiastically sub, um, submitting bug reports, but you never get back to them, um, or like uh, whatever, whatever um, versions uh, they are using, you do not support them anymore, but you don't say it in the, in, in the documentation. So whatever um, that makes customers unhappy, they will turn really fast. And that would mean a waste of marketing efforts. So whatever markets, uh, marketing efforts you put in to get them to discover your, uh, your product will be wasted. 
and uh, they may even lose trust in the product or even the company. Uh, things will get pretty um, serious in the enterprise software world because normally we will have service level agreements for any uh, enterprise software and uh, breaking SOAs can have uh, legal implications. Like the uh, product support is definitely important, but it's not easy. There are a lot of challenges that um, makes product support difficult. First of all, we really don't have uh, enough visibility into what is actually happening. So as long as there are users who are outside from your, from your team that are using the actual product, um, they will be running on environments you will never expect. They will have different configuration that you never test on, and they will be running app versions that you have no idea which one is. Um, and uh, the worst thing is when an issue happens, normally there will be a series of actions that result in this particular issue, but it can be very difficult to capture the actions before the issue happens. And um, let's assume in the best of the days, your product is growing and uh, you will also encounter the problem of a growing support, uh, the volume of uh, support requests. You will receive more and more of them and you will feel that your team is beaten down by this increasing load of support requests. So how do we scale product support in this case? Uh, I would like to uh, start with what we did uh, at WhatsApp. Um, I wouldn't jump into the conclusion first because um, there will be some examples that I learned from I want to call out to them. But um, first of all, I want to introduce the product that, um, that inspires this project. So uh, WhatsApp Business API is, uh, was launched last August and is still in closed beta. Um, basically, it is an API that allows businesses to send uh, and receive messages, basically communicate with their customers using WhatsApp at scale. And uh, another context that is very important to understand the entire issue we are trying to solve is that uh, WhatsApp, unlike a lot of other um, chatting platforms, it is end-to-end uh, -end encrypted. What this means is that a piece of software has to be installed somewhere to encrypt the messages before sending them and decrypt the message uh, one, once you receive them. So on the mobile phone, the WhatsApp app is the one that actually does the encryption and decryption. Um, but we can never just hand over a mobile app to businesses who are trying to send millions of messages to their customers using WhatsApp. So what we do is that we come up with a Docker-based solution. Um, the, bit, uh, the solution that we come up with in this graph is shown as the business API client, which is the second part. So these are a set of Docker containers where it does the encryption and decryption of messages. Whenever the business who are using the API uh, they, they will request the API and uh, the business API client is going to encrypt the message and then send it to WhatsApp server, which um, already encrypted. And then the WhatsApp server will further forward it to the end users, which are normally using mobile or the web app. And then it's on this mobile and web app where the messages will be decrypted. This is how end-to-end uh, -end encryption like, uh, graph, uh, roughly works for WhatsApp. And like all the traditional APIs. This means that the businesses not only need to develop, not only need to integrate with the API that, API that we provide, but they also need to manage the business API client. They need to install the set of Docker containers inside their data centers so that the messages can be encrypted and decrypted when they receive, send and receive messages. So we come back to this list of the challenges of product support. Um, basically, the Docker containers, once we hand them over to the businesses, we lost all the visibilities of where they are actually running these containers, what configuration of their servers are look, look like. We do not know which version they are using, um, and we do not want to capture user behavior because uh, WhatsApp is very privacy focused. Um, and of course, being WhatsApp, we will never be like we will never lack any um, any skill. So the volume of support requests, even we are still in closed beta, is uh, growing by the day. So what do we do under this case? 
before I jump into, uh, into my solution, I want to, there are two ways that the industry is already doing it. The first one, uh, the business API is more uh, aligned to the enterprise software um, domain. So what we can do is that uh, we throw a bunch of engineers, like sales engineers, who are able to understand how to install these Docker containers in the businesses, data centers, um, and uh, try to solve all the problems when uh, doing this installation and sub setup process. However, uh, WhatsApp is a very small company, believe it or not, and we will never uh, afford to have a bunch of uh, sales engineers just to do this installation and setup uh, process. And on the other hand, we also want to get fast feedback from the product as soon as possible and always have your own people to use your product is the, the, the least effective way of collecting feedback because they are familiar with all the good and bad with your product and it may not generate very quality feedback. On the other hand, what does the open source community do to support a uh, product? Uh, if you have used, uh, like downloaded any GitHub repos, you will know that whenever you are running into any problems using any repos, the first thing maybe after Googling around is to open a GitHub issue on their repository. And uh, like users of that repo, it, it can be the maintainers or it can be just uh, another user who have run into the same problem before. If they see your issues, they would uh, reply and you will get your answers. And this is definitely what uh, we want to do, uh, considering the, the scale that we have and uh, the lack of uh, enterprise support uh, availability. But is this good enough? Because if your product keeps growing, you will definitely have more and more issues open to you. And while the business is going through the entire onboarding process, a lot of them will be going through the same set of problems again and again. And you do not want your team or even the users to suffer from answering the same questions again and again. Um, is there a better way to scale product support? So I look further into something that uh, inspired my ideas. So Homebrew is a package manager for macOS and Linux. Uh, I believe most of us here uh, already used it before. And uh, if there's anything wrong with Homebrew, uh, even on the official troubleshooting site of uh, Homebrew, it recommends you to run brew update twice and uh, run brew doctor once and fix all the warnings before you open any GitHub issues because they know brew doctor is able to check a lot of common issues before um, so that you do not open the same common issues on their GitHub uh, again and again. Another more recent example uh, is from Flutter. So Flutter is an open source mobile application development framework by Google. Uh, and almost the first thing after you install the Flutter SDK, uh, the documentation will ask you to run Flutter Doctor. It will check if your iOS uh, development environment has been set up correctly, if Android installed, if there's any virtual device that are connected, if there's any um, real device connected, and you need, to, you need to basically fix all the warnings before you proceed. Both of these examples are um, inspiring me to think the way that they scale their product support, both of them are CLI, which means a client, a command line interface. The reason is that uh, most of the users of these two libraries will basically be developers, and developers are already familiar with the tool chain of using a command line interface all the time. They, they both check for common issues so that the team doesn't need to answer the same issues again and again. And they also empower more users to solve issues by themselves by giving very clear instructions on what to do if you see a certain type of warning message. So what I do is that uh, we come up with a troubleshooting tool for the WhatsApp Business API client as well. So as shown in this, uh, in this GIF, basically whenever you are running the wdebug command, wdebug command, uh, it will run a list of common checks that we think we, the business will generally run into. And if there's anything wrong, uh, we will highlight uh, either in the format of a warning or error message. And then there will be instructions telling you what to do. And uh, we will also generate an run ID where if you still cannot solve your problem, you can always refer back to this run ID in the direct support uh, issues. 
So I already mentioned, even we are checking most of the common issues, there will still be issues that uh, cannot be addressed. Or maybe the business knows that the system is not working, but all the results of uh, WDebug is working, then what do we do? Here we use a support system, but this is depending on user um, provided information. And um, the challenges with that is that users normally do not know what are the most relevant information to provide you to troubleshoot a certain situation. They may provide incomplete information. They may even give inaccurate information. Uh, they will also give irrelevant information in hope that this will help somehow. And uh, it will mean a long feedback cycle because you have to talk to a, like, uh, basically a real user to if they are providing inaccurate or irrelevant information, you need to wait for the reply, which is a, a very long feedback cycle. So instead of doing this, um, and depends on user provided information, what we also add in to the product is, um, oh, okay. So um, to capture the user actions, there, there are like basically two types of actions, one, uh, two types of products. One is on the server side, so what the business API does, it is installed in the business data centers. Another one would be that, let's say your mobile app, it would be used by consumers. Uh, normally for enterprise softwares, you will generate a lot of logs. Um, and then for user consumer side products, um, if there is a, a capability to replay user actions for the short duration before the user uh, before the issue happens, then that will be very helpful to troubleshoot the actual issue. Being an uh, enterprise software, uh, WhatsApp Business API uh, needs to get the logs basically to troubleshoot in, in depth of any issues that the business may have. So I also add in this logs command into WADebug. What it does is that it will collect and zips up all the logs that is relevant to us um, and send over to us if the user uh, choose to. The impact of this project is that uh, we are definitely seeing less support volumes for common issues because they are supposed to be solved by WDebug uh, run checks. And we are seeing complete and relevant logs captured previously when we are depending on the users to submit logs, they will just uh, give you five lines of logs and expecting you to see what is going wrong with that. And definitely with all the, 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 these two points, uh, support efficiency is greatly improved. Now, why Python? Why I'm talking about this tool here? Um, it is not because Python is the best language, programming language in the world, although that may, <laughs> that may uh, hurt some people's feeling, but uh, it is very important to choose the right tool uh, for a team and for your product. Um, we choose Python because Python is already used extensively at uh, Facebook and WhatsApp. Um, like a common example will be PyTorch, which is uh, a Facebook Python project. Um, we have, um, because the business API clients are a set of Docker containers and Python have very uh, stable SDKs to support interacting with Docker containers. It also, um, it is also very crucial to check all the networks and all the database connections and Python also have very good support for such functionalities. Uh, not, last but not least, the team also have a very good Python knowledge and uh, I would argue this could mean the most in a lot of, um, in a, a lot of greenfield projects, you always want to choose the, the, the language that your team is most uh, comfortable with. The project now is also open sourced. Um, although there are not a lot of traction yet, I think this is also something I want to improve, uh, just basically to inject the mentioning of this product more in the actual WhatsApp Business API product more often. Uh, on the other hand, the, even the Business API is still in closed beta. So uh, this troubleshooting tool may not, like, may not get a lot of attention, but we are still trying to build on top of this. Learnings. Um, 
I want to broaden the scope from how to scale product support to how to generally solve a business problem because providing uh, like scaling product support is a type of business problem that we face. First and most important thing I think is to know your customer um, and what we call KYC. Basically, it is the same thing for, for homebrew and also for Flutter. They are comfortable with having brew doctor and Flutter doctor because they know the most users, the dominant user base of this, product, of this product will be developers and developers will feel more natural when they're using CLIs. And it's the same thing for us. And uh, what I did, um, as, you, as you have seen, uh, I'm learning from the best because uh, whatever business problem you are running into is probably already observed by other businesses. Um, and you don't, you don't need to reinvent the wheel every time. And like learning from the best is the, the best shortcut that you can take. Also choose the right tool I mentioned. Um, it doesn't have to be the, the most fan, the fanciest uh, programming language that is, uh, that is a high, high, highly praised language as long as your team is comfortable with this, as long as um, it can solve your business problem, that is what's the most important. Also to innovate. So in my case, we could uh, easily just throw uh, a bunch of enterprise software engineers, although it may not be the most efficient, um, efficient way to solve this problem. Whenever you jump into a conclusion before you're doing that, is to think, like pause and think if this is the most efficient way that you can solve any business problems. The, the way that most people travel may not be the best way for your product. So like, always try to innovate and try, always try to understand your customers before coming up with your own customized solution. Um, this is not the end for the product. We are always looking for improving any product that we have. So, of course, uh, whenever the business wants to install the WDebug to troubleshoot their business API client, the, it's the, the installation and setup of the WDebug comes with a new set of problems itself. Sometimes uh, it can be that um, the businesses just wants to troubleshoot their setup in their production environments, but all of their production servers don't have any internet access and they, are, they may not even be able to download the Python package. Um, when they are running the, the, the library, it is running like bare metally on the server itself, so it still comes, up, uh, it still comes with its own problem of, uh, of all the runtime errors you may have seen. Uh, it can sometimes pro, um, it can sometimes uh, generate confusing results as well. A very um, a very uh, obvious example that we have seen is that in, for to enable the communication between the business API client and the WhatsApp server is that we are using a certain like a certain couple of ports. Um, so whenever we want the business to install the business API client, we will always ask them to open your um, firewall to allow traffic on these two ports. But of course, um, WDebug will be using a different set of ports and whenever like the, the WDebug may not work properly because the port are closed, but actually the setup is working fine because the port is open. So it can also generate confusing results. The solution for all of this is to build a data-driven product. Um, a lot of times, especially your product is super early, it is very uh, easy to easy for the team to intuitively come up with some, some, some things you want to build in hope that the user is thinking about the same thing as you did. It doesn't work out uh, most of the time because the user may have different expectations and different user behavior than what your team is thinking about. So rather than in, like, uh, based on your product features on what, you what your team think is the best thing to build, you should always use a data-driven um, method to know what the user really wants and where do they run into the most uh, issues when using your product. Uh, and of course, lastly, I think it's what um, the, the, the final stage of supporting a product is 
never to have your team to do all the work. Uh, if your product is able to be open sourced, then you can you can offload a lot of the support work to a self-sustained community. Of course, you need to build up this relationship with the community at the start of the product and uh, keep um, keep a very good relationship with them to maintain the product. But as time goes on, it will be the best sus um, sustainable way to support any product. That is all. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Um, uh, how do you decide what kind of issue be included as the in the test suite? Yeah. So that is a very good that is a very good point. Um, I think to get started yeah. with any product, you cannot. Uh, always listen to the users. They may think they want something, but actually like, that may not be the, 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 the thing that they actually want. So what I think to get started with every product, it is not like always uh, more useful for you to know your customer better just by talking to the clients who are actually using this product and see which issues they're running more often into. You have to get off the ground by talking to real users and uh, like actually observe their behavior and see what uh, like what to build to solve their problems. I, I'm curious to to learn how many of you are like students. Okay, so most of you are are working already. That's great, because uh, I think this is more. This is more relevant to people who are working in the industry to 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 think more about actually solving the business problems rather than like going really deep to solve something that may not generate a lot of benefit to your company or your product. If uh, if there is no questions. Um, maybe I should plug this. We are hiring, so um, yeah. If you if you want to learn more about uh, uh, job opportunities in Facebook, we are not allowed to say so. Oh, oh. Yeah, I wanted to ask a question. I oh yeah. Is, uh, I thought everything is relevant. Um, yes. So that is also a very good problem. Uh, question. Sorry. Um, actually, WhatsApp um, differentiates its uh, client side and uh, server side really. Uh, like they distinguish these two sides. So on the server side, uh, if we can, let me just quickly pull up the the diagram here. So if it was, like Erlang is basically the WhatsApp server here. It is the one that uh, is very good at um, like processing large load of messages, um, like concurrency and that stuff. Um, but on the other hand, the client itself. Uh, can be written, let's say, we have iOS and Android app as well. For the business API clients, uh, mostly it is in C the C++ because of the performance. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much.